Bye, guys. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully we are on or jumping back on. I know it's uh, been a little different. All right, there we go. So everything is uh, is up. And uh, here's what we're going to do. It is uh, 9.22. So I know uh, 9.20 was uh, the time to... Uh, to jump on, hopefully you are getting back on. Let's see. All right, there we go. I see some of you guys are on. Here's what I want you to do one more time. Uh, for every class today, I know it's going to be uh, a hassle, but for every class, just uh, just sign in saying you're here. And then once that you do that, again, uh, unless the teacher is asking you a question, make sure that you are uh, not chatting with your friends and different things like that. Just uh, just hang in there, and uh, we'll go through this. I uh, see a lot of you guys here. Good deal, and uh, glad it's working out. Again, I do apologize. Uh, make sure, hey, let me say this, make sure that when uh, we are uh, chatting on there, everything we're saying is appropriate and uh, different things like that. So uh, do, do make sure of that and uh, be respectful of everybody else in, uh, in the class and everything like that. All right. Well, hey, you guys, um, it is uh, it's sort of a bummer, but you're stuck with me for another class. So uh, I apologize. I know it's a big letdown. But, uh, but you are stuck with me, and so we're going to go into science. So hopefully you have your science book, your science notes there. I know that uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of notes there. Get those out. Make sure you get your notes out so you're able to uh, follow along with them, and then uh, we'll be able to go through this together here. Uh, we are going to start out. Well, first off, we're starting out with a quiz. Well, just joking. Uh, but, no, he did have a reading quiz for you. So let me go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll go to what it was. Now, this one we're not going to take uh, because uh, it's been a little bit of time since you read this. I'm assuming that you probably got this last Wednesday. So uh, two weeks ago. I don't know if you remember what you read two weeks ago. So we're not going to worry about that quiz. But just to, uh, just to hopefully help remind you of some of the things that you went over at that time. Uh, Mr. Brown has it set up with some of the questions here. And so let's go through this, okay? Let's go through this. What is the process by which rocks are broken down by the forces of nature? What is the process? You just maybe say it out loud at your house or in your head. I am 100% positive that all of us got the correct answer here. The correct answer is weathering. Weathering is the process that uh, everybody uses to, uh, to get this done, or that God uses, I'm sorry, that breaks down the rocks by forces of nature. Then the next one, what is the process of breaking down large rocks into fragment by physical forces such as ice, rapid changes in temperature, and grit carried by wind and running water? Okay, again, there at, your, there at your home, think about this. What is the process of breaking down large rocks it down, or breaking down large rocks into fragments by physical forces such as ice, rapid changes in temperature, and grit carried by wind and running water? That process is called physical weathering. And again, great way to remember this. This is a physical force that's being used. So physical weathering. It just breaks it down a little, uh, a little bit easier. Okay. Then, what occurs when rainwater or melted ice soaks into tiny cracks in a rock and freezes? What occurs when rainwater or melted ice soaks into tiny cracks in a rock and freezes? occurs. Okay, let's see if you got it right with whatever you thought it was. Ice wedging, ice wedging. Uh, again, not something we deal with a lot here, but uh, ice is definitely, uh, I, I, my family lives back in Ohio, and uh, they have snow on the ground right now. I was looking up different places, and uh, there, there's a lot of places that, uh, that, have, the, uh, that have snow already. And so uh, they deal with this. We don't have to deal with it too much over here. What process involves the breaking away, breaking or peeling away of rocks in layers? 
What process involves the breaking or peeling away of rock in layers? Breaking or peeling away of rock in layers. And exfoliation. Exfoliation. Again, we're just doing this. I know some of you are just getting on. Uh, you are not having your reading quiz today because, of course, uh, that was two weeks ago that uh, you read the assignment. So we're just going through some of the questions. Hopefully this will jog your memory a little bit as uh, we're, we're going through the questions here. What is the process when minerals in a rock react chemically with air or water? The minerals may weaken or even dissolve away, causing the rock to crumble. What is the process when minerals in a rock react chemically with air or water? The minerals may weaken or even dissolve away, causing the rock to crumble. The correct answer to this one, chemical weathering. Chemical weathering. And again, big, the big difference, you have physical weathering and chemical weathering. Okay, those are two of the big uh, ones that you need to know. And uh, the nice thing about that, to me, I don't know about you, I try to look for things in the question to help me. It's asking you chemically, with air or water. So it's chemical weathering. Physical, it was talking about the wind, the rain. That's a physical thing that happens, something we can feel. And so, of course, uh, that hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for you when you think about it. All right. General facts, general facts. Now, I think now you are uh, getting to your notes, all right? Your notes, sorry, all I have is, uh, all I have is your notes here, so I'm not sure exactly what all you need to write in, so please have your notes out so that you're able to go through this, fill in the blanks that you need to do, and that'll be a help to you and make sure you have those all written down, okay? So erosion, the carrying away of rock fragments such as by wind or running water. Now you guys have all seen erosion. You all have, right? You've had water and you've poured water onto something. Or let's think of this, okay? Um, guys, do me a favor. Make sure that we are not uh, chatting in the uh, the chat thing there. Uh, that is distracting to, uh, to everybody else. So unless you're asked a question, uh, please make sure that you are not writing in different things so you don't distract everybody else that's jumped on here. How many of you, you went to the beach? You guys go to the beach last summer maybe and built a sandcastle. I, I like going to the beach. I like building sandcastles. Now, when I build a sandcastle, I try to get close enough to the beach, right, where you know the water will sort of, you, it can come in there. Maybe sometimes you ever try to build a pool in there as well or something harbor where the water will come in what happens as the water is coming in there it takes part of the sand back right you could build a huge sandcastle and you guys ever been there when it's sort of the the tide is starting to come in a little bit more so maybe the beginning of the day you were there and you have plenty of room and you're you're building this sandcastle and a little bit later you notice that hey now it's uh it, it, it's coming a little bit closer to the sandcastle until finally it's there and it starts hitting against maybe the walls you have of the castle or something like that and what does it begin doing taking those back and soon you don't have the sandcastle there it's been completely eroded that's what erosion is that's one of the ways that erosion happens so it's not necessarily the only way but it's one of the ways that erosion happens and i think probably one that all of us have experienced as we've been at the beach and we've witnessed erosion sort of happening it comes up and takes away that sand and those minerals there and so that's what erosion is the carrying away of rock fragments such as by wind or running water and then caves caves a Network of underground activities. Okay. Uh, so you guys are saying you don't have the notes. My bad. I was under the impression that you guys did have the notes. Here's what we'll do. Um, let's uh, let's go ahead. Or, or do you have them? If you have them, let everybody know on there. I'm sorry. I don't have. I, I don't have them. Um, I'm just going off of the. Uh, the flash drive here and what it has. Do you guys have those notes? Put it down there. Okay, page two. Page two. Thank you guys. Thank you for helping me out there. Page number two is uh, where you should be.
Okay, page two. So let me go back up one. Go back up. Erosion was the first one. Some of you don't have it. If you don't have it, here's what I want you to do is just sort of write in. Write in. Right. Just get a piece of paper, maybe the back of one of your notes, you can write it in, and that way you'll be able to follow along with it. Once you get the notes, you'll be back and uh, get those notes there. I do apologize. I, I don't have uh, the notes or anything like that. Hopefully, it uh, looks like a lot of you do. There are some that... Um, that do not have them. I don't know if you can. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm not the one to ask the questions. I'm not sure if you guys were pick. Did you pick those up or were, did you already have those notes? It looks like I have some questions about it. Again, Emma, I apologize. You got them a week ago is what uh, Jonathan is saying. So it looks like most of you have them. If you don't, I do apologize. Um, hang in there the best you can and maybe just on the back of uh, one of your notes, you can uh, you can take it out and uh, just write it that way. If you find it, you might have it already and uh, maybe just can't find it, so just write them in there. The rest of you that have them, uh, good job. Just follow along with that, okay? All right, thank you guys. No more on the uh, the chat there, but thank you for helping out. I, I do appreciate it. I, I'm not, again, I don't have it all uh, down because I'm just subbing in, so thank you for helping out. So erosion, then caves, a network of underground cavities, a network of underground cavities. You guys ever been in a cave before? Caves are sort of cool. It's cool to go into them and to see the stalactites, the stalagmites, all of that, and just to see how they form on the ceiling and on the ground. I'll tell you one time I went into a um, a cave, and uh, we, we were on a family vacation. I believe this was in southern Indiana. And so we went into this cave, and you got to walk down the stairs, and they got lights, of course. It wasn't like a spelunking where you had to have all the gear. I mean, this was this was a tourist type thing. And so we went into the cave, and as we're in the cave, uh, we saw all the things. And I'll tell you the thing I remember the most from it was we were sort of in the middle of the cave, and uh, okay. I want all of you to stand right here. Nobody move. I want everybody to stand. Okay, so everyone's standing there. They're like, now don't move. We are going to turn out the lights. So again, they had lights all throughout the cave. We're going to turn out the lights, and the moment they turn those lights off, some of you, I, I, I'm sure, have probably experienced this. I mean, I, I remember putting my hand right here. Actually, I'm probably, uh, maybe you guys age, 13, 14 years old. I remember putting my hand right here, and you could feel it. You could feel it touching your head, and you couldn't see a thing. So incredibly dark in there. And those are caves, a network of underground cavities. And really, they are, uh, they are fairly fascinating. Again, it's not something I would uh, recommend you doing in, um, at, or you know, yourself is, oh, I found a cave. Let me go in here. Not something I would recommend doing. But it is something that, uh, that there are places that you can go and you can see these things. And it looks like we're going to talk a little bit about caves. All right. Deposition. The process of depositing of eroded rock fragments in a new location. The process of depositing of eroded rock fragments in a new location. Deposition. So what is this talking about? Okay. Again, remember what erosion we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to focus mostly right now on water doing. Let's say that, that it's beating against them. We're in California, more familiar with the ocean, and so we'll say the tide is coming in against the rocks, and the tide comes in, and over a period of time, erosion is going to take place, where parts of that rock it's going to begin to carry away. Now, when it carries away, now when it's the ocean carrying it away. That could go a great distance, okay? When it is maybe something like a lake or something like that, a lot of times it will deposit it to an area where maybe you can see it. So it takes some of those rocks, it deposits them over here, and that's what we're talking about here, deposition. The depositing of rocks that have eroded, so the, the we're focusing more on the waves or something like that. The waves have come in, they've taken the rocks, they've moved them somewhere else, and this is again what deposition is about there. So deposition. Erosion by rain. Now, I know you're like, I live in California. What is rain? Yeah, rain, we, we experience it, right? We don't experience a lot of it. Uh, we typically have just a few days a year where it really, really rains. And a lot of times when it rains, you know, it rains and an hour later you can't tell. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. I was shocked 
Like when I first came to California, I was in Lancaster, and the rain would start to come down. And roads would be flooded. I'm, some of you probably streets. Uh, some of you live maybe Cherry Valley, Beaumont area. There, you ever gone down Brookside when it is raining? I mean, that road can flood very, very quickly. They've got signs up warning about flooding. And so I was surprised because I'm like, it's not even that much rain. Uh, I'll tell you this, and I, I, I'm sure it's fixed by now. My first job when I was here in Banning was at a place called Food for Less. You guys been there? You know, it's right on the other side of Highland Springs, so in Beaumont there. And I remember the first time I'm there and it starts to rain. You know what everyone was doing? They're running to get, like, buckets. They're putting uh, covers up over things in the back because the roof leaked. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, they never got it fixed. Well, because in California, right, we don't have to worry as much about rain. It doesn't happen. If you lived in an area, the Midwest or something like that, or back on the East Coast, where they've got to experience a lot more with rain, then you've got to be worried about it. Then it's a concern. But when you're here, it's not really as big of a concern. So an important thing, then, that we've got to make sure to, uh, to understand that rain, but even here, Erosion happens by rain. So erosion by rain, what are we going to look at here? Rain, the beginning of the process of erosion. Now, that's the definition of rain. I think we all sort of know the definition of rain. Maybe not exactly how it all works, but rain is moisture that comes down from the sky, right? Um, you, uh, you're you walking and it rains and you can get soaking wet. Uh, the worst time this ever happened to me, I was uh, in college and back during the summer and working. And one of the things we were doing is I was mowing yards or mowing uh, the, this factory, and we had one of those zero turns mowers. You guys ever had one of those? Those are fun. Um, you know, the ones where the handles are right here, and you're going to uh, to turn it and everything like that, right? Out there mowing, I'm on the back side, good distance away. And uh, it starts, like, it looks like rain, and then all of a sudden it just starts pouring down rain. Now, I've got to drive that thing back over there. And I, I mean, it was, I came in, I, I was soaking wet. Rain, the beginning of the process of erosion is what we're looking at. Raindrops are small and light, but they strike the soil with enough force to knock particles of sand and soil up in the air and creating craters on the ground. Okay, so look at some of this. Uh, great picture right here. Hopefully that helps you see a raindrop. Now, sometimes those raindrops can be big, and we feel oftentimes they don't seem that big. But when they hit something like the ground, like soil, or, or something like that, I mean, it, it moves it. It changes it. Now, we don't often think of that as erosion, but that is a physical force that is changing the composition, or not changing the, how it looks, the ground. And so, in a way, just that little simple rain is some of these pictures right here, you can see how it hits that, and you can see the uh, the ground uh, sort of changes a little bit. That is what we're talking about. They, they can be very small, but they still can have an impact as far as erosion goes right there. During a heavy rain, more rainwater may fall than can seep into the ground or evaporate. And we've probably all seen this. In fact, this year, I believe that uh, there, there's many warnings. For uh, for um, uh, mudslides, mudslides. Uh, some of you maybe that live in the Cherry Valley area, I've heard there's a lot of warnings that are out right there because of the fires that's taken away all of that brush, and so they're afraid that just a little bit of rain will come in there and it will it will quickly move things down because there's no brush to uh, to hold it back, and so that's uh, that that's that's a concern that some people have as far as with the with the rain coming here. And so hopefully I know some of you are saying it's static, some of you are saying it's not. Hopefully it is not. And uh, hopefully it's working all right. I, I hope for you there. Picture right there helps you to see. We, we've all seen this where we've been out somewhere and, and especially when you see the, the dirt it's going to move a lot of that, and that's what a mudslide would do. So a mudslide is a form of erosion, just a, a much bigger scale than we typically think of. But rain can cause that. Runoff. Runoff. The excess of rainwater that pools up on the ground during a rainstorm and flows downhill. Okay, so an excess of rainwater that pools up on the ground during a rainstorm 
and flows downhill. So as you see this, runoffs can cause it shows a little bit of the uh, the pictures of some of the things that can happen with runoff. And again, this is something that um, when it rains, the water is going to go to the lowest point. So some of you maybe you have a uh, a hill in your backyard where uh, you know you go out the the porch and then the uh, sort of straight up. And back behind is the neighbor's yard. That's a, sort of a common thing in some, some houses around here. Maybe that's what you have. When that rains, all of that water is going to funnel down to you. That is why of the streets, they're slanted. And when it rains, what happens? You're going to see all of this water running down the curbs until there's some type of drain that's going to take that away. And that's what they've put up these drains there to try to help with the runoff and all of that. So it's an important thing that there is a spot for all of this water to go. But all of that water will run down, and especially, like I was talking about with those mudslides, when there is nothing there to sort of soak up that water, it's going to be able to bring things much quicker. And that's why uh, this week I'm going to help somebody. They've got to put sandbags up around their house. They live up at the top of Highland Springs, and they're concerned about their, their, their community there is, has really talked to them about the fact that there may be mudslides. And so they want sandbags. And the reason they want the sandbags is because where their door is at, it's at a lower point. And so they're afraid that that water will run right to that lower point. And so it will it'll pull up at that lowest point. And so some of you, maybe you've got a spot in your yard. When it rains, it's going to start to, to flood a little bit. Um, all of us, remember when elementary school, right? Maybe here, if you guys were here, the playground up top there. Right? What happens to all the water when it comes in? It's going to pull up right sort of at the bottom of the playground. Do you guys remember that? I mean, it'll, it'll be flooded. And you can't go out there. Remember when you were a little kid, you couldn't go out on the playground because it was raining. A form of erosion that happens is on the playground, we have wood chips. We'll put those in there, we'll bring them, put them all in there, and when that water runs down there, you know what it does? It takes all those wood chips down with it. That's a form of erosion. It, form, it runs downhill, and uh, that, that's a way that it does that. So you can see some of those pictures there. Again, some great pictures that uh, hopefully help you guys uh, understand a little bit more about what, um, what we're talking about here. Sheet erosion. The excess of run, wa rainwater that runs downhill, stripping away a thin sheet of topsoil from the surface of the land. Sheet erosion. So these are some things that are not about. Sheet erosion. Snow is a major source of runoff in the northern mountainous regions. Again, not something we need to worry about. So some of you have lived in places where there is a quite a bit of snow and things like that, but not something that uh, that we that we deal with. But again, a uh, a different way that you can have that uh, erosion happening there. All right, so it's just runoff in the northern and mountainous regions. Okay, R rills, rills. Okay. Rills, narrow, shallow cuts in the soil. Okay. And again, you can see this, and this is something that would be common uh, that you would see. You see how it looks like it's found that lowest point, and it's all rushing together. And as it rushes together, um, you can see it leaves a trail behind it. And that trail behind it is called a rill. Narrow, shallow cuts in the soil. Gullies. Now, these are the channels at a much larger scale. Large channels in the ground that cannot be repaired by ordinary cultivation. Large channels in the ground that cannot be repaired by ordinary cultivation. This is, this is not something that's just going to take care of itself, as you can see in these pictures. It's going to form, and, and sometimes that happens over long period of time, other times maybe not as long, but it's something that's going to form and uh, that you're going to see. In some of those pictures, you can see how big that is. Gully. The process of runoff water carving channels in the ground. Runoff water 
carving channels in the ground. And really, it's fascinating when you look at this, and you can see how over a period of time, that water has come in there and it's formed a stream and it just continues to take away uh, the, the sediment and that top layer of soil and everything's taking away that top layer of soil, it's gonna, it, it can get pretty deep. Guys, do me a favor, some of you guys, uh, I know you love seeing yourself tight, but make sure that you're not doing that, all right? Make sure you're not doing that. Um, what is 2A and B? It is, let me go back, real or A is erosion and B is rills, sheet erosions and rills, all right? So gullies are a large channel on the ground that cannot be repaired by ordinary cultivation. A ravine, a ravine is a gully filled with wildly flowing water during rainstorms, but quickly dries up in clear weather. And this is the this is a spot that when it really rains, there's going to be water there. But pretty soon the sun comes up and it's it's not going to be permanent. So it looks like a stream. Like look at some of those pictures right there. If you were to walk there, you, you might think that there's always water there. But it's really just a runoff that just when it rains and it rains pretty good, that is when there's going to be water there. Um, if it cuts down to the water table, so the water table I think you guys have talked about before, is the level where water starts to come from the ground. It will become a permanent stream. All right, erosion by rivers. Erosion by rivers. So that was erosion by rain. Erosion by rivers. Let's look at this. Of all the forces of erosion, running water has the greatest effect on the Earth's surface. Of all the forces of erosion. So running water has the greatest effect on the Earth's surface. So if I take a look, there's many forms. We've talked about this. We've talked about, uh, you know, the form of erosion. Rain is what we just talked about. Snow a little bit. Snow, just a different form of precipitation that comes down, of course. But the one that is has the greatest effect is running water. Running water has the greatest effect on the Earth's surface. And the greatest form of running water that we have is, is rivers. Rivers. Large streams that carries waters from the mountains to the sea. Water runs off the mountains, where it's rained, runs off the mountains, it'll find that lowest point, which will be a stream, then it'll get into the stream, and that stream will carry it to another point. Most of the time, those streams, they will end up in some big lake there, or sometimes they'll end up in an ocean, something like that, but that's how it gets all that water, and it takes it. Really, when you look at this, it's amazing how God designed everything. He designed it to where we need rain, so rain will come, but he designed it to where if there's a lot of rain, it, there, there's ways that the water just will get rid of itself and will take care of itself. Sources of river. The headwaters. This is the source of a river. Okay, This is the, the beginning of the river. And here at this river, this is where all that water starts to come in at. So it's a lot of times they can be close to mountains, close to something like that, where it's a source where that water, once it rains, is going to run into the headwater. Streams are primarily fed by ice and snow that melt during the spring and summer months. Now, we get to see this a little bit. That's one of the things I love about Southern California. In our area, I love the mountains. I love being able to uh, Christmas time. I, you don't have snow here very often, right? But we can look up into the mountains and we can see all the snow right there in the mountains. That is an ability that we have. And what happens though, summertime, that snow is no longer up in the mountains. That snow is going to melt. And when that snow melts, it's going to run off. And when it runs off, it's going to find, again, remember, that lowest point, And that's going to be where the stream is going to start. In warmer climates, streams are fed by mountain rain. Again, all is dealing with the mountain and that water coming down and finding that lowest point and starting the stream that way. So headwaters are the source of a river. A load, a load. This is the sediments carried by a stream. The sediments carried by a stream. The load that a stream can carry depends upon the stream's swiftness. So if a stream is... is not really moving at all, it's not going to carry that much. 
It's not going that fast. Whereas if you are at a stream where the water is moving pretty quickly, it's going to carry a lot. And it sort of shows you those pictures down there at the bottom. It shows you how it moves smaller rocks, bigger rocks, some of those, again, just think about it, to move a bigger rock, you're going to have to be moving quicker. And so that's why it depends on how fast the stream is moving. The process of sorting or arranging sediments into layers according to their size is depositing sediment into layers of progressively finer sediments on top. And again, on top will be that, that sort of the top soil type layer, even in a river. And it's usually a little bit uh, smaller materials, smaller sediment there. So a load, the sediments carried by a stream. A river system. The feature formed by streams merging and flowing towards the sea as a large river. Okay. I'm not sure how many of these you're going to need to know, but just so we understand, see the source, that's at your, your top of that page there. The source, this is again, oftentimes by a mountain, some type of thing there where all that water is running off and it's going to get into the stream. Uh, it could be the mountain, the snow melt, something like that, but it's going to start right there. Then it's going to begin to flow down until finally it finds a place where it deposits that water. Lake, sometimes it's going you know, straight into the ocean, something like that, but it will find a spot where it will deposit that water. This is how a river works. A drainage system is a relatively large stream and any smaller streams that flow into it, a drainage system. By the way, this is how people have set up drainage systems as well. They're going to have systems that, uh, that go through here and it will bring that water down and it will make sure to, uh, to, to help not cause erosion all over the place. A relatively large stream and any smaller streams that flow into it. This is what a drainage system is. A drainage basin. The region of land drained by a stream or river system, a drainage basin. The region of land drained by a stream or river system, drainage basin. Let me give you guys a second to write that in there. Okay. A drainage divide. A high ridge that separates two river systems. So if you look right there, you see the two river systems. There's a ridge in between that. And then once that ridge is over, it's finding that lowest point. It's going to come together and form one stream, river, whatever the case is. A drainage divide is a high ridge that separates two river systems. Drainage divide. And now we're going to look at some of those that um, we know about, some of the, the bigger ones. We have the Great Divide, the Western Drainage Divide of the Rocky Mountains. Again, I don't know how many of you have been to the Rocky Mountains. Uh, not too far away from us here, but you can see how that starts way up there in Canada. is going to go all the way through uh, the United States, sort of cutting it in half. And this is what's called a drainage divide. The Great Divide is the western drainage divide of the Rocky Mountains. The eastern continental divide is the drainage divide of the Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian Mountains. And in the United States, we have two great mountain systems that sort of go down um, or sort of cover the almost the entire part of the United States, one on the eastern side, Appalachian Mountains, one on the western side, and uh, that those are the Rocky Mountains. But the eastern continental divide, the drainage divide of the Appalachian Mountains. Drainage divide of the Appalachian Mountains. Most of the rain falling west of the Great Divide drains into the Pacific Ocean, while most of the rain falling east of the eastern continental divide eventually reaches the Atlantic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to. I believe I'm just going through these right here. I'm not sure how far it goes. All right, there. Perfect. I was wondering when that would uh, be done. All right, your homework. I know you always anxiously await to uh, to get your homework. There, your homework is to read pages 102 
to 104. 102 to 104. First draft of STEM project is due. So make sure that you're working on that. Uh, research plan, attach the research plan evaluation with the student portion completed. Now, I certainly hope you guys understand the last part of that. I do not know as, uh, as much on that one, but the your homework read pages 102 to 104. That's easy enough to understand. And then your first draft of STEM project is due. He will let you know. Let me see if it says when it is due. I don't have it on there. But work on that there at the house and attach a research plan. Let's see. I got a question on the last one. And that's uh, a drainage divide. Let's see. Eastern, divide, Eastern Continental Divide. Eastern Continental Divide. All right. So you guys have that. It looks like some of you have some questions about your... Uh, your STEM project, which again, that is just talking about, I believe you guys are, are working on your, uh, some type of research project, so whatever that, uh, that you need to, uh, to do for that, if you have questions on that, again, I apologize, I'm not the one that can uh, help you with that, I'm not sure on what all that entails, but hopefully, uh, you guys are, uh, familiar with that enough there, okay? All right, guys, well, you have, uh, what, I think this class ends around 10, so you've got about 12 minutes maybe before the next class. So why don't you guys uh, go ahead and uh, take some time, get a little bit of break, go get something to eat, a snack. I know it is now 10 o'clock, so you are near starvation, and so hopefully you can survive. I think you got lunch coming up in like an hour, so hopefully you can survive long enough to get there. But uh, that will be all that we have for today. Hey, and I, I know many of you are having questions about the project, and I'm I'm just telling you guys, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. So if you don't know, uh, maybe it's something that's in his notes that he has not gone over with you yet. So don't worry about that. I don't believe this is something that's going to be due like the next day that you are back. Uh, so don't worry about it if you don't. Here's the main thing you need to do. You need to know 102 to 104. All right, 102 to 104. Um, so just uh, just do that. If you don't know about the project, which it seems like uh, you guys do not know, then do not worry about it. All right, don't worry about it um, because uh, there's no. I, again, I, I apologize. I'm not sure exactly what it is, and so it may just be something that he was going to explain. But since he's not here, can't explain that to you. So we'll wait until Mr. Brown is back, and then he should be able to explain exactly of what that is. All right. So no no worries, no stress on the project there if you don't know exactly what is going on. Guys, take a break, and uh, we will see you guys again soon.
Alright guys, hello. I hope you guys had a good Christmas break. Oh, Christmas. Thanksgiving break. I'm already at Christmas. But um, I, guess, I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving break. Um, and that you guys got a lot of turkey and spent time with your families and went Black Friday shopping. So hopefully you guys did have a good Thanksgiving break. So Mr. Coral and I are feeling a lot better. We did get sick over the, the week, but we are feeling a lot better. So hopefully you guys are feeling a lot better. Some of you guys got sick. But um, let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started with um, our literature, okay? So on Wednesday, I believe that was our last day together. Um, I did say that we were going to have a quiz over the Four Ring Circus because some of you guys did not read the story. But since we, um, what's it called? Since we could not meet the next few days, you guys lucked out on a quiz. So, um, for those of you who are commenting for unrelated school stuff, you guys need to stop. Okay? So, go ahead, um, actually though, this is a school-related thing, I do want you to comment that you are here, okay? So, I'm going to come back and go through the comments, and if you did not comment that you were here online right now, I'm going to have to mark you absent, okay? So, make sure you guys are paying attention and that you comment um, that you're here, okay? And like I said, John unrelated things to school about Spongebob needs to stop, okay? I'm dead serious. So make sure you guys comment that you are here, okay? Go ahead and turn to page number 83 in your literature books, okay? Give me one second. Literature books. Okay, so we kind of talked about point of view before we left, okay? So point of view is the perspective from which a story is told, okay? You need to mark this in your book, or you need to, um, what's it called? Or you need to write it in your notes, okay? So make sure that you are writing these down, okay? Point of view. It's the method of presenting the reader with the material of the story. It's the perspective from which the story is told. And on Wednesday, of, um, two weeks ago before break, we um, talked about the Four Ring Circus, okay? And this was talking about um, the four redheads on one team and some new guy comes and starts trying to boss them around. But this perspective of the story was told through the eyes of the team manager, okay? So, it was through the eyes of the team manager, so basically an outside point of view looking in onto the team, okay? If you don't remember, the names were Rusty, Sandy, Red, or Carrots. Those were the names of the four redhead. Ted was the name of the new guy that came to the team. And basically in this story, he, um, BJ Shoot, he just basically tells a short story of the way that Ted comes and he starts to try to make them play actual basketball and, you know, a, def a, um, a solid offense and some defense, whereas the Redheads were used to playing crazily, crazy basketball, okay? So it comes up to a game, a game that they're supposed to blow them out of the water, but then they barely win that game. Okay, that was the game against, hmm, the game against Prentice High. Okay, then there was another game against their rivals that they were supposed to or that they really wanted to win. Okay, if we're on page number 87 in our books. Okay, page number 87. Okay. He's basically just talking about um, this game against Washburn, okay? This game against Washburn that was their, um, the team that their school just had to beat, one of their rivals. 
and at halftime they were down, and then at halftime Ted was kind of yelling at the redhead saying, all right, we just need to play consistently, we need to play like this, but then from the outside of the perspective looking in, the team manager basically steps in and says, hey, you need to let them play the way that they are used to playing. And he steps in, he starts yelling at Ted, saying, you're the new guy here, you came in and started changing all the stuff, and you didn't even think about changing your game. And so basically, he confronts Ted, and then during the game, you guys were supposed to find this out, um, but during the game, Ted actually started playing the way the Redheads played. And then in the end, the Redheads started to play their game, and they actually ended up winning the game. Okay? So that is the, <coughs> excuse me, the Four Ring Circus. It was written by BJ Shoot. The theme of this was the importance of teamwork. Okay? But a line that you do need to know from this work is on page 86, okay? Page 86, I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, page 86. That slap happy out for a picnic brand of basketball fitted them the way maple syrup fits a waffle. So this is basically referring to the way that they played. This is on page 86, at the top of the page on the left-hand side, okay? Um, it's the first paragraph, that's actually a complete paragraph on page 86. That slap happy out for a picnic brand of basketball, okay? That is a line that you need to know from this work, The Four Ring Circus, written by B.J. Shute, okay? Everyone turn to page 91. Let's talk about the last lesson, okay? The last lesson. The last lesson was written by Alphonse Daudet, okay? It was obviously, um, obviously not American, but it was a French um, man. It was translated by Marion McIntyre. You guys can see that on page number 91, okay? Alphonse Daudet, just some information about him. He basically was a French native who began his career as a teacher. Then after he was teaching, he kind of ended that career and moved on to an author, okay, or a writer. So he started writing for the local newspaper. He was able to devote much of his time to develop his writing. Um, and then he has a book of published poems. He was actually one of the most widely read um, fiction writers of his time, okay? This work, The Last Lesson, it was taken from his book, Contes du Lend, okay? Or, translation, Monday Tales, okay? For Monday Tales, this is one of several books based on the dark days of the Franco-Prussian War. Okay, and during this war, remember we talked about the Tale of Two Cities that was during the French Revolution. Well, this story was during the Franco-Prussian War, was written through this time, and in this time, it basically was a sad time for some parts of France, some parts of Prussia, because a lot of it had a lot of German influence, and this is kind of the story um, that we need to start reading, okay? So that's tonight, read this story, The Last Lesson, written by Alphonse Daudet, okay? Pages 91 to 94. And honestly, if you guys read this story, it's kind of put, it kind of puts things in perspective. If you guys already see on the screen, doing your best in all things. In the story, it's basically... It tells the story of a young French um, scholar or a student, and then he goes to school and he kind of realizes that um, the importance of making the most out of, ed of his education, but he kind of realizes it too late, okay? So make sure that you guys read this tonight, the last lesson that is your homework to read, okay? The last lesson, page 91 to 94. Okay, 
Go ahead and put those away. Take out your uh, your vocab books. Okay. Your vocab books. Turn to list. Actually, for some of you who are missing some of your books, some of them came in this week. So I have a grammar book. I have a literature book. So if you want to, I'm not exactly sure if it's Kayla and um, Eliana or Joey, but if you guys already have your books, let me know. Please put it in the comments. Um, Kayla and Eliana, if you guys don't have your books yet, let me know because um, some books came in, a grammar book and a literature book, so you guys can come and get that, but make sure you comment on that. But take out your vocab books, okay? Vocab, turn to page number... 24, list number 8, okay? List number 8. Okay, list number 8, page number 24. Okay, so let's look at the vocabulary. Well, this list first, actually on the vocabulary, let's look at the spelling words, okay? Spelling words is illustrating rule number 3, okay? Rule number 3 says... Four words ending in Y preceded by a consonant change the Y to an I before all suffixes except those beginning with an I. So all suffixes, they end in if they're ED or um, ER, D, K, all of the suffixes, you would have to change the Y to an I except if the suffix already begins with an I. So ING, you wouldn't have to change the Y to an I. Okay, so that is our rule number three. If you guys look on page 24, okay, page 24, number one, accompanied, okay? Notice how your suffix ends in ed, okay? So your root word is accompany, but notice how the i is changed, or y is changed to an i before adding the suffix. Same thing with apologies. Number, <coughs> excuse me, three, carrier. Okay, look at number four. Okay, this is it. Um, you don't exactly have to change the Y to an I here. Okay, chimneys, look at that. There's a consonant of, or the suffix of the letter S. Okay, this one is an ex uh, not an exception, but you wouldn't have to change the Y to an I in chimneys. Same thing with decoys, okay? The reason why we don't change it, if you guys look at your rule... Okay, um, suffixes beginning with the I, try, suffixes beginning, um, final Y preceded by a vowel, okay? So look at this, you wouldn't have to change the Y to an I in number four, chimneys, because there's a vowel preceded by the letter Y, okay? So you would keep the Y, okay? Same thing with decoys. There's an O before the Y, you would keep the Y in decoys. But you would change denied, okay, an I to an uh, Y, or a Y to an I before you add the ED. Okay, so words already ending in Y, if there's a vowel before the Y, you don't have to change the Y. Okay, so that is your spelling list. Look at your vocabulary list, numbers 1 through 10. Okay, I'm going to read through them so that you know what they sound like, okay? Certitude, it means assurance, sureness, conviction. That is certitude. Number two, chivalry. This is courtesy, honorableness, bravery. We kind of associate the word chivalry with maybe knights um, back in the medieval times or maybe manners. That's chivalry, okay? so. Courtesy, honorableness, bravery. Number three, indispensable. This means necessary, essential. Okay, if you're indispensable, we need you. You're essential. Okay, number four, indulgent. This is lenient, tolerant, pampering. Number five, lateral, which is sideways. Number six, pliable. This is easily bent, flexible. Number seven, scour. This is cleaning by scrubbing. Number eight, squall. Violent windstorm. Number nine, subordinate. Inferior in rank or authority. 
secondary, and then number 10, veneer, which is a thin layer over a less valuable material, okay? So tonight for homework, do one through five two times, okay? And some of you guys have asked how to turn in homework. You guys will turn it in when you come back to school, okay? So list eight, one through five, two times. Make sure you guys write that down um, in your work or in your notebooks or start in your books. One through five, vocabulary, words, and definitions two times. So you will turn that in. Hopefully next week, but when you come in, you'll turn that in. That's one of the things that I'll be asking for for you to turn in, okay? That's tonight for homework in your vocabulary, okay? Um, I'm going to go through the questions. Some of you guys are asking, like I said, how you turn in the homework. It's through... Um, It's through when you guys come back to school. So write these on a piece of paper and then just turn that in when you come back. Okay? Everyone take out your grammar books. That's the last thing we're going to go through. Okay? Grammar, turn to page number. Let me look real quick. Oops. Okay, our grammar books, page number 65 in the green book, and then page number 74 in the blue book, okay? Page 65 in the green book, in this book, okay? Or not 65, sorry, 66, okay? 66 in the green book, okay? And then page number 60, um, 74 in the blue book. Okay, if you're not coming back on Monday, then you need to take a picture and email it to me, okay? Take a picture and email it to me if you're not coming back next week, okay? So you still need to turn in your homework. If you guys have any questions, I can send you the way to send in homework through distant learning. But you do need to turn that in when we come back, okay? Go to page number 66 on um, reviewing the sentence on page number 66, exercise A. We are on page 73 in the blue book, reviewing the sentence, okay? We need to draw two lines under each verb and then draw lines or draw one line under each subject, okay? Draw one line. Um, I gave you guys my syllabus so that should be on there my email okay but if you do not have it it's Hannah Coral at Calvary Christian Online .com. okay I'll write it on the board right now okay Hannah Supposed to be in one line, obviously. Christian online dot com. Okay, that is my. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Hannah Coral at Calvary Christian Online dot com. You can send that to me through my email if you guys are not coming back. Okay. All right. Let's go through exercise A. Let's go through the green book first. Okay. We kind of already did these, I'm pretty sure, but this is reviewing the sentence. You guys will have your test next week on Wednesday, okay? That is over units one through four, okay, which we've already been learning. It's just a review, so let's start this review, reviewing the sentence, okay? John, do not talk about um, Among Us, okay? Everything needs to be related to the school, okay? Make sure you guys are paying attention, okay? Cody, we are on page number 66, okay? You guys already should be there, okay? Just because you guys are distant learning doesn't mean you guys cannot pay attention, so pay attention, okay? Exercise A, okay? Page 66, exercise A, we're going to go through the green book first, and then we'll go over the blue book, okay? Okay? Two lines under each verb, one line under each subject, and then we need to watch for compound parts 
and verb phrases, okay? Number one, Native Americans were the first settlers of North America, okay? Look, take a second and look at for my verb, look for my subject. My verb is were, okay? Remember how verbs, they show action, they show um, being or existence, or they link words together. So in this case, were is a linking verb, okay? To find my subject, okay? No, um, to find my subject, we were talking about were. So I would ask who or what were Native Americans were, okay? Native Americans is my subject. I would draw one line underneath the word were, okay? Jezreel, you did not have to say that comment, okay? Number two, platypuses are native to Australia and Tasmania. Number two, I need to find my verb and my subject, okay? My verb is are. It is a linking verb, okay? Are is a linking verb. Who or what are? Platypuses are my su is my subject, okay? Platypuses are who or what native. It's drawing or it's linking platypuses to native. We'll get into that later. Okay, number three. Our language borrows many words from other languages, okay? Take a second to look for my verb. Our language borrows many words from other languages, okay? Borrows is my verb. That is my action verb, okay? Who or what borrows language. Language is my subject, okay? Number four, Robert Browning developed the type of poetry known as the dramatic monologue. Okay, take a second to find your verb. For those of you in the blue book, you should already be working on exercise A if it is not done already. Okay, so that we can go through those. So for those of you in the blue book, page 73, exercise A. Okay? All right. Okay, exercise A, page 66. Number four, Robert Browning developed. Okay, developed is my verb. Robert Browning is my subject, okay? Number four is developed. Um, number, sorry, did I already do number three? I don't think I did number three. Well, borrows is my verb, language is my subject, language borrows. Number four, developed is my verb, Robert Browning is my subject, okay? The number five. Dr. Jim McDonald traveled to Scotland during the Christmas break, okay? Any words there that show action is my verb. Any words that link, in this case, it is an action verb. Traveled is my action verb. I need to find my subject. Dr. Jim McDonald is my subject. That entire name, Dr. Jim McDonald, okay? I'm going to go ahead and give you guys um, time to work on the rest of the exercise if it's not done already. Let's go over to page 73 in the blue book. Number one, Indians were the first settlers of America. Okay? Were is my verb. Indians is my subject. Okay? Number two, they have lived here for centuries. Okay? Notice how there are... Um, different verbs or verb phrases. Have lived is my entire verb phrase. Have is my helping verb with lived. Who or what have lived? They. They is my subject. Okay? Number, two, uh, number three. Lasting contact between Indians and Europeans began with Christopher Columbus's voyages to America. Okay? This one's kind of a longer sentence, but you need to look for anything that begins or that shows action or links or helps. And in this case, number three, it is the word began. Okay, began is my verb. I would underline that twice. Okay, and then who or what began. You guys need to watch this, okay. My subject is contact began. Okay, contact began, 
the words between Indians and Europeans is a prepositional phrase that we have not gone over yet, but you need to find the subject of your verb, and in this case, contact is my subject, okay? Number four, Columbus was seeking a short sea route to India, okay? Was seeking is my entire verb. Okay, was seeking, um, was as a helper, seeking as my verb. Make sure you guys are watching for those. Who were what? Was seeking Columbus. Columbus is my subject, okay? Some of you guys need to pay attention on um, the, the pages, okay? We are on page 73 in the blue book and then page 66 in the green book, okay? Yes, page 73 in the blue book, okay? All right, number five, the Indians spoke many languages and were divided into different tribes, okay? In this sentence, you need to look for your entire verb phrase. And in some sentences, there's more than one verb, just like in this sentence, okay? So my verb is spoke and also were divided. Okay, but my one main subject is Indians. Indians spoke and then Indians were divided. That's number five. Okay, go ahead and do the rest of the exercise. If you guys are done, awesome. Okay, just finish the rest of the exercise. Find your lines under each verb and then the line under the subject, okay? Let's look at exercise letter C on page number 67. Okay, exercise B, it's just writing your own sentences. I don't really care for these because sometimes you don't, you can't practice um, uh, finding things. But go ahead and go to exercise C, page 67, okay, and then page 74, okay. This is kind of reviewing what we've already gone over. Exercise C, okay, remember how we talked about run-on sentences, okay, and fragments. Basically, remember we said that fragments are bits and pieces of sentences that need to be connected to make a full sentence, okay? Um, and then run-on sentences are basically a bunch of sentences all mixed together um, that kind of need structure. So those are run-ons. Fragments are bits and pieces, okay? So let's go ahead and look at exercise C. Let's do number one in the green book together. Okay, page 67. Okay, Benedict Arnold promised allegiance to America. He broke his word. Notice how there's a comma there, and those are two sentences join together incorrectly. So therefore, number one is a run on, okay? So make sure that you guys look at number one on page 74 in the blue book. Gophers have fur-lined pouches in their cheeks they use as sacks. Um, they use these sacks as market baskets on their food hunting trips. Notice how all of that was joined together without any correction, okay? The, um, that is a run-on, okay? So now we know that those are both run-ons. We need to know how to fix a run-on, okay? So in number one, on page 67, Benedict Arnold promised allegiance to America. I would put a period after America and capitalize the word he, okay? That's when I would fix those. Number one on page number 74, gophers have fur-lined pouches in their cheeks. I would put a period after cheeks and capitalize the word they, okay? Make sure that you guys are looking through these and saying, okay, this sentence doesn't make sense, or this is mushed together, those are run-ons, or if it's like kind of choppy, Maybe that's an indicator to you that it is a fragment, okay? So tonight, finish exercise C. And yes, on page 66, exercise B, it was extra credit. I did announce that. So if you want to come and show me when you do come to school, I can count that as extra credit. 
That's exercise ba uh, B on page 66 and exercise B on page 73. Okay? That was extra credit. So make sure that if you want extra credit, some of you guys need the extra credit, go ahead and do that. Okay? And then exercise D is basically just correcting the run-ons and fragments. Okay, I want you guys to do this for classwork, exercise D. So just do exercise C and D on page number 67 and page 74. That'll help you practice run-on sentences and fragments, okay? Like I said, we do have a test on Wednesday over our units. So everyone turn to the beginning of your book on letter, or Roman numeral three, okay, at the very beginning, the table of contents, okay, same thing, that is on page number, well, I guess it's not a page for you, but the table of contents in the blue book, okay, you guys need to star these units for your test on Wednesday, okay, Star manuscript form, star capitalization, um, star punctuation, and then um, star the sentence. Okay, so in the green book, it's one through four. Okay, in the blue book, it's units one, three, four, five, and eight. Okay, that's the grammar part. Also, composition sections, okay? So, look at page number, or turn the page to, um, in your composition sections on the next page, in your table of contents, the composition section, okay? Composition sections one through four. So, the writing process, the paragraph, the summary, and then the outline, okay? That is in the green book. In the blue book, it's section seven, section four, section nine, and then section 14, the writing process on page 186, okay? If you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna repeat this, okay? In the green book, okay, in this green book, okay, it's sections one through four, manuscript, capitalization, punctuation, and the sentence, okay, so parts of speech, end marks, capitalization, okay, and then in the composition section, it's the writing process, which is plan, write, rewrite, and edit, Okay, the paragraph, how do we develop a paragraph? Remember, it's examples, stories, okay, the summary, and an outline, okay? And then in the blue book, it's section one, section three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and 14. Okay, just the writing process in section 14. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer them. I'll give you, do a few minutes for questions. Okay, you're asking how do we show you the extra credit? I just said, Cody, that you need to come in and show me. Okay, or you can take a picture and email it to me. Okay, that's how we turn in any homework if you want that extra credit or show me when we come back for school, okay? So again, tonight's homework is to finish page, um, the grammar exercises C and D, okay? To read pages 91 and 94 in literature, the last lesson, and then for vocab, your definitions one through five, two times from list number eight. Words and definitions, two times. Okay? If there are any questions, please let me know.
All right, welcome to class, students. All right, first things first. Okay, hopefully everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Um, hopefully you're doing well. If you got sick, I'm so sorry. We're praying for you. Ms. Me and Miss Coral are praying for everyone that um, got sick, whether it's uh, COVID, flu, anything going on. But I hope you had a great time with family. Uh, got to maybe catch up on some TV shows, movies, play some video games, eat a bunch of food. Uh, hopefully those playing basketball, did some basketball stuff, although I'm sure you didn't. Okay, but hopefully you did. Um, we don't know when basketball is going to start back up. Okay, so we got to be doing stuff at home. Since we're not having practice stuff, make sure we're doing that at home. Uh, hopefully everyone is doing well, though. Really miss you guys. Uh, can't wait till we can be back in person. But some rules during class for those who like to chat every three seconds. Okay, there is no more chatting. If I see anyone, so the last one I see is John Powers at 1243. There is no more chatting. If I see anyone chat other than what I'm about to announce, what I want to see in the chat, Okay, you will receive demerits. Although you're not here in person, you can still receive demerits. Wow, look at that. Okay, so no more. Uh, no more um, Among Us chat. No more anything in the chat other than this. So if I see anything other than this with anyone's name, you receive demerits right now. Okay, so at this point, and while we're doing the streaming, we don't know how long we're going to have to be doing it. Okay, so as far as now, till whenever we're done with this, okay, what I want to see in the chat in my class... Okay, is your name, and your name needs to be say, say hey, uh, Nico here or whatever. I need to see that from when class starts, which was about five minutes ago. Okay, so 12:40 to 12:45. Everyone's name should be within those five minutes. If it is not, you will be marked absent for that day. Okay, whether you got in the stream later or not. Okay, you're gonna be marked absent, just like if you were here in school. Okay, you'd be marked. As tardy, okay, you're gonna be marked as absent. So make sure your name is here in the chat. That's all I want to see. If I see anything else, okay, you will receive demerits. Thank you guys. It's good to see all of you. Okay, I'm gonna be doing attendance real quick, and then we're gonna jump right into the notes. Sadly, you're gonna have to do notes um, on your own today. So I'm gonna tell you the best way to do that. Okay, but then um, I'll have an announcement at the end of class that should help with that. So let me go through and do attendance real quick. And then we will start. We have Emily. Good to see you, Emily. Well, good to see that you're on the stream. We have Jason, Jezreel, Mia, Brianna, John, Tyler, Erica, Aaron, Joey, Natalie, Cody, Jasmine, Chase, Ariana, Emma, Nico, Kayla. We have Hudson. I see John. I don't know why you can't see or hear me when you when everyone else can. Okay, and then you have Destiny. So people I did not see. Jason. We do not see Jaden. Okay, I do not see. I do not see Bella. see Mark, Micah, I see, oh, there's Jaden, so I'll change that. Thank you. Again, starting tomorrow, if it's not in the first five minutes, today there will be grace. Okay, but if I don't see in the first five minutes tomorrow, you will be marked as absent. Okay, let's see, John, John, we don't need any emojis. Thank you very much. Boom, 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 Chase, Jasmine, Joey, Cody, Erica, Micah. All right, I think I got everyone for today. Okay, we'll do that every day. Okay, if I do not see your name in the first five minutes, I'm going to do it right during class, so make sure I can get it. Um, but we're going to jump right into our notes. We are starting Chapter 10. I advise you to pull out a piece of paper, but best thing for notes, okay, I will get you notes um, today after class. Obviously, I don't have all of your emails. Okay, on hand. So what I need from you, most of you, okay, not all of you, all of you, but most of you should have my phone number. Okay, those who are on sports teams, everything, you should already have my phone number. So what I want you to do, if you would like notes, okay, you can either highlight in your book if you'd like, or I'm going to give you another way for today that would probably be best. Okay, but if you would like paper notes that you can print out or something like that or follow along, okay, text me. My number is, here we go, 989 
two two. Okay, most of you should already have that. It's in my syllabus that I give everyone, but that is my number. Okay, if you have any questions, text me. It's easiest. I see it right away if you text me. Okay, sometimes I don't see emails right away or my school works. That's the easiest way to get a quick answer from me. Okay, um, if you'd like the notes, text me. Even if I already have your number, say your name and give me your email you'd like me to send it to. Okay, if you don't send it to me, you won't get notes. If you want notes, I'll send it to you today. Okay, after you give me that. Okay, but we are going to jump into it whether we have the notes on hand. So again, you can write the notes. Okay, I'm going to try to go as slow as I can, but I'm going to be going through the notes. Okay, so this is what I recommend. Pull out your books, turn to page 100. Turn to page 100. Yes, I see you, Jaden. Okay, Jezreel, I don't need your comments. Again, no one else is commenting anymore from here on out, or else it is demerits. Trying to get mercy. Okay, I don't want to have to be strict, but that will be the main rule. Okay, with us doing distant learning, no chat in the class. Okay, but we're going to be starting. This is what's going to be best for you to do notes. Pull out your book, turn to page 100. Okay, and as I go through the notes, so here, let me put up the first note there so you can see it. This one. Okay, that works. Pull myself off the screen a little bit so you can see everything. Okay, so like number one, on page 100, you have Arabia. Okay, our first note is Arabia. Okay, what I would do, okay, whether you want to highlight the note, okay, or highlight Arabia or underline it, but what I would do is maybe highlight the word and then put number one. So if you want me to send you the notes, text me your name uh, through your number so I know and send me your email. Okay, and then when you can fill out the notes, okay, you can just go right in your book, number one, Arabia, and you, you can fill it out right from the book. All right, so that will probably be the easiest way. I recommend that. I'm not going to be going back through the notes with that. But here we go. We're starting Chapter 10, Islam and the Crusades, a cool time in history. Okay, but before we begin, we are going to pray, and then we will get started. But it's great to see you guys. Uh, good hello, hello from Mr. Coral. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving break. Can't wait till we can be back in person. But let's pray, and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for today. Uh, thank you that we get to still have school, Lord, that you've given us the technology uh, to be able to do this live stream as though, or although it's not exactly what we want, it works for now. Uh, I'm praying for the kids, Lord. Hopefully they're all doing well. Um, hopefully um, they had a great Thanksgiving break, whether with family or friends. Uh, the memories, hopefully, they were able to make. Um, you know, me and Mrs. Coral, we miss them all, Lord. Hopefully they're doing well, and we get to see them soon. We're praying for them. I uh, hope we have a great week this week and do our best through this distant learning and the homework that will be uh, still due and everything in the system as it's going to be a little bit different for me, a little bit different for the kids, for us to be able to work together uh, to get it done. Uh, please bless all of them through this uh, time and Christmas season as it's coming for us to be able to enjoy that with our families, enjoy the break, um, work on things, uh, create goals to better ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, again, we're starting chapter 10, Islam and the Crusades. Okay, one last announcement um, before I get ahead of myself. Okay, I gave all of you, or most of you, okay, test three. Okay, you should have either turned that in person, emailed me, texted me. I've got a lot of them, but I don't think I have all of them. This is your grace period. Okay, so again, so text me if you want the notes. But if you did not get the test or you didn't check your email, so go check your email, check spam because it might be in your spam. Okay, if you did not get it somehow, whether it's a hard copy or it was something, okay, if you didn't get it, you need to let me know, okay, because you will have until tomorrow. This is your grace period. So if you didn't turn it in, you're like, oh, man, I'm just going to take a zero. I didn't turn it in. Your grace period is today or tomorrow. It must be turned in at the end of school. So 3 o'clock tomorrow. If I don't have someone's test because I'm grading them today and tomorrow, okay, you will receive a zero, and that is a test. Okay, so make sure you get that done. Um... Make sure you get that done. Sorry, I had a text from Mrs. Carr. Um, you need to get that done or else you receive a zero. That is a test that was assigned before we left from break. Um, hopefully, you guys already sent that to me. If not, you need to get that turned in. If you did, great. You guys are doing awesome already. Okay, but let's start our notes. Uh, you should already have number one written down or highlighted or however you're doing it. Okay, we have a little bit of time left, so let's use it wisely. Okay, we're trying to get to... Let me check real quick. How far we need to get today. All right. Get it back up there so we know. Here we go. Number one, Arabia is the area we're talking about in this chapter. Okay. Arabia is a huge peninsula. 
Can you remember peninsula when we talked about is a uh, area of land surrounded on three sides of water? Okay, Italy was a boot-shaped peninsula. Remember we talked about that. Okay, it's a peninsula in the Middle East. It is about one million square miles in size. Page 100, Cody. Page 100. Okay, so Arabia is large. This is the area we're talking about. There's a little picture of it. Okay, who lives in this area? Okay, it's approximately 1 million square miles in size. It lies directly southeast of the Fertile Crescent. Remember, we talked about that. Okay, little rainfall, a lack of year round rivers, and temperatures as high as 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's hot. It gets hot here, okay, but that is hot. Extremely hot. Okay, not a lot of water, very dry. And it makes most of the Arabia's desert wasteland. The Arabs inhabited the Sea of Sand. Divided into many tribes, they fought over the scarce feeding and watering spots for their camels and horses and sheep and goats. So all this little bit of water and food they did have, people fought over it because they all wanted it. Okay, and this brings us to the main inhabitants, or at this early time of Arabia, Okay, the early inhabitants of the Arab people. They're known as Bedouins. Bedouins, sorry. Bedouins. And these are Arab nomads or travelers. Bedouins. Okay, the bleak desert was alive with imaginary spirits and rocks, trees, and even little pieces of wood. Crude beliefs promoted idol worship and gross immortality. So we have these nomads and travelers. Uh, different religions. These are the Bedouins. Okay, the beginning of this Arabia area and nation and people came from a descendant most of us might know. Okay, it's someone actually from the Bible. And we see the Arabs came from the descendants of a man named Ishmael. Ishmael. I'll give you guys a second to maybe write that one down. Okay, Ishmael. Again, like I said, I would highlight the word in the book, write number three right by it. So then when, once you have notes, if you'd like them, okay, you can just do that. Rather, instead of trying to write every single word down, because you're probably not going to get them down. You don't want anyone getting frustrated because you can't get all the notes written down. Um, I would say highlight in your book, write the number by it. Once you get the notes, fill them out later. Yes, Emily, if you do have a study sheet or anyone has a study sheet, send that as well so you can get extra credit. You don't send it I mean it doesn't hurt you but if you do send it you receive extra credit again I would say uh, send it to my email Nick Coral n-i-c-c-o-r-l at Calvary Christian online dot com I prefer that email for school okay you can text it to me as well okay you can turn it into the office as some students did that works as well too okay but it has to be turned in by tomorrow or else you receive a zero Okay, but Ishmael, he was Abraham's son, one of his sons. Okay, he received God's blessing to a father, a great nation. To father, a great nation. Okay, about 600 years after Christ's ascension, okay, we see these peoples into heaven. Many Arabs submitted to this religion, as we know as Islam, and became Muslims. These Muslims believe there is no God. But Allah and Muhammad is the prophet. Okay, so we have this next a key person in this Arab uh, religious belief and their cultural belief in all honesty, what they believed in, who they believed in. We have Muhammad. Muhammad. Muhammad means highly praise. Highly praise. Okay, by A.D. 570, so around AD 570, in Mecca, the city of Mecca, his family, Muhammad's family, was charged with guarding the Kaaba. Muhammad's family was charged with guarding the Kaaba. Remember, no, Muhammad is known as the highly praised. Okay, we're going to learn more about him later. Okay, so if they're guarding this Kaaba, what is it? I don't even, most of you are probably like, I don't even know what that is, Mr. Coral. What is the Kaaba? Okay, Cheyenne, I'll mark you uh, present today. Thank you for throwing your name in there. 
Okay, but tomorrow, remember, if you're not turning your name in the first five minutes, you will be absent starting tomorrow. Okay, again, I want to work best with you guys, but we still have to be on time. You're fine today, though. Today was a great day. Uh, hopefully, you're doing well. It's good to see you. Um, just join in with us. Okay, but what is a Kaaba? Here it is. It's a religious building which housed a meteorite known as the Black Stone. Arabs considered this stone or this land, this Kaaba, sacred, very holy. Many Arabs would visit this Mecca to pay their respects to the rock they believe to be sacred. So this rock that fell from the sky, a meteorite, as we all know, okay, they made this shrine basically for it, and they worship this rock, this meteorite, this Kaaba. It's a holy ground, sacred. They believe it is sent from Allah. Okay, so continuing with Muhammad, give you guys a little bit of time to write that note down. second all right so it's Kaaba so continuing with Mohammed Muhammad number six at the age of 40 years old. Okay, remember Muhammad's parents guarded the what? The Kaaba. Am I cutting out? I'm sorry, let me scoot up a little bit. I don't know when you guys will be back in school, John. I'm sorry. The school will notify you um, once we can. I'm sorry, Nico. Hopefully you can hear me better now. Just do your best. If you, if you ever can't hear me or I cut out, just follow the notes, okay? Make sure you at least get the note marked in the book, okay? Or written down, whatever it may be. But number six, at the age of 40, Muhammad claimed that he was receiving revelations from the angel Gabriel. Okay, this is what Muhammad claimed. He claimed he was receiving revelations from the angel Gabriel. Okay, let you guys write that down. Okay, and this is going to make Muhammad believe something very interesting. Number seven. Okay, we're on page 101 now. Muhammad came to believe that he was the specially appointed prophet. His name was for the one and only Allah. Okay, Muhammad later on believed... Okay, that he was the special appointed prophet from Allah. From Allah. Allah is the Arabic word for lowercase g, God. Muhammad said that Allah is the same as the one the Jews and Christians call God. He proclaimed that he was Allah's choice. To bring the men, or to bring men, the perfect and complete truth, and that he was the last of the series of prophets that includes Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. So Muhammad said, hey, all these special people the Bible talks about, okay, I'm part of them, basically. And this is what he told people. He's like, I'm sent from, the, from God, from Allah. Okay, Muhammad also preached that all who believed in Allah and him... Okay, so he didn't preach about the one true God. He, pre he preached, hey, follow me, Muhammad, and follow Allah, which sent me. So I, I'm basically Allah. Okay, so remember. Sorry, again, some people messaged me. I got to check it right now. Okay, with distant learning. Okay, so remember, this is Muhammad's message, was to preach, okay, 
um, about Allah and himself. And he did all he taught would spend eternity in heaven. If you obeyed Allah, not God or the Bible, if you obeyed Allah, you would get to go to a place like heaven. Okay, the thing with that over, okay, whereas no one really saw Muhammad or really saw Allah, it was kind of somewhat fictional, okay, but with the fact of Jesus, over 500 people saw the resurrected Jesus. So after Jesus died on the cross and the story we know and he rose again from the grave, three days later, okay, over 500 people saw him after he died. No one witnessed Muhammad's supposed encounters with the angel Gabriel, or that Allah t or told him to do this and become his prophet of Allah. Okay, no one witnessed it. Not one. Not sing one single witness. Okay, 500 people witnessed Jesus after his resurrection. Excuse me, but no one witnessed Muhammad's supposed encounters. Okay, only Muhammad saw the visions and heard the voices. People had to accept or reject his claim solely on the basis of his forceful personality or the appeal of his teachings. Okay, this is going to lead us to another section in Muhammad's time. Muhammad's teachings alarmed the rich businessmen of Mecca. They feared that Muhammad's vehement opposition to old Arabian religion of multiple gods or spirits and idols threatened Mecca as the religious center of Arabia. Okay, at this time, Arabia, they worship uh, polytheism, idols, many gods, nature, okay, where Muhammad said, hey, worship Allah, worship me. By 622 or 622, Muhammad had decided that he and his few followers must leave Mecca. This flight, okay, so this leaving of Mecca, this flight of Mecca is called this, Hegira. It's Hegira, which is known as Muhammad's followers. It's like a time period. It's not like a person. It's when Muhammad's followers decided to leave Mecca in 622. This was the turning point for Muhammad and his new religion. It was a turning point for Muhammad and his true religion. Okay, this leads us to the acceptance in something else. So we have Hagira. This is the time when Muhammad and his followers left Mecca. Okay, first his followers and then Muhammad himself fled several hundred miles north of Mecca to a city that's called Yatharib. 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 Which was renamed, and we, we would know it more as Medina. Medina. The city where Muhammad was accepted after he fled Mecca. So no Yathrib, but it's also known as Medina. It's the same thing. So know them both as the same thing. Thanks, Nico, for helping him out. Again, it's sorry. It's, I don't really hear. That's why I said if you have a question... Text me sometimes because it's hard to see the chat. I'm not really looking. I'm looking at the camera. So I look down. Thank you, Nico, for helping him out. Yes, it was Allah. Give you guys a little bit of time to write this down. Okay, next note is the people of the Jews. Muhammad quickly gained total power in Medina, or Yathrib, as both religious leader and head of the government. People who believed Muhammad's claim simply assumed that Muhammad should completely control them in all aspects of life. Okay, so they not only believed Muhammad to be the prophet and their leader religiously, now it's in everything. Muhammad did nothing to discourage such 
tendencies as he combined religion and politics. He said, you want to follow me? Yeah, follow me, follow me. I'm your leader in everything. I'm your leader. Listen to me. Okay, among the few in Medina, or among the few in Medina who did not accept Muhammad's claim were the Jews. The Jews. Okay, they did not accept Muhammad's religion. The men... Okay, when they didn't accept Muhammad's religion, the men would be beheaded and the women and children would be slaved. So anytime they didn't accept Muhammad's religion or teachings, okay, this is what Muhammad's followers and Muhammad would do. They would behead the men, okay, the leader of the family, and they would make the women and uh, children of that man or family okay, as slaves, which is kind of sad. Okay, this is going to lead us to a time of a thing called Holy War. Having combined religion and politics by Muhammad, it was only natural that Muhammad would combine religion with war and empire. Muhammad preached that Allah wanted everyone in the world to be Muslim or at least to be ruled by Muslims. After successfully resisting a Meccan attack on Medina, so the old uh, Arabic religious groups attacked Muhammad in Mecca. They resisted and they survived that attack. Okay, Muhammad led about 10,000 of his followers on the first jihad. Jihad. Or also what it means is holy war, known as holy war. It literally means my struggle. Okay, Muhammad saying, hey, this is my struggle. This is my holy war. For Allah to make everyone either be Muslim or be under Muslim. Your screen is frozen. I can't help you with that. I'm sorry. Let me move this a little bit. I'm blocking some notes. Okay, sorry, your screen's frozen. I can't really do much about that. Okay, so moving on, I know it's a little bit longer note, I'll leave it up there for a little bit. Okay, we just have a little bit more time. Okay, do a few more notes, and then we will be done for today. Okay, follow along, because we do have a few more notes we need to get through. Again, I would just mark them in the book. Don't even waste your time, write them all down. You can try, but I don't think we have time for that. Okay, number 13, Islam. Okay, so Muhammad... Okay, this religion became known as Islam. Okay, this is the religion of Muhammad. Islam is the religion of Muhammad. Okay, Islam is the religion of Muhammad. Know that. There's a difference. Okay, Muslims were those who followed Islam. So, if you followed the religion, okay, the religion of Muhammad is Islam. If you followed it, you were considered a Muslim. Okay, if that makes sense. Okay, Muslims were those who follow Islam. Okay, both Islam and Muslims come from the Arabic word for surrender. Okay, surrender your life to Allah. Both Islam and Muslim come from the Arabic word for surrender. Both Islam and Muslim come from the Arabic word for surrender. Thank you, Cody, for trying to help out. And John, thank you for trying to help out. Okay, so just like... Okay, it's not the same, but just to give you an example, just like we as Christians, we follow what? Okay, what's our guide to life? Okay, give me one or a couple people, throw it in the chat. What is our guide to our lives as Christians? Let's see if someone gives us an answer quickly. What is our guide to our life as a Christian? What is our guide to our life as a Christian? Come on, someone's got to know it. 
Okay, yes, Jesus. But what do we use? What do we use here? Example, what do we use as our guide to our life? There it is. Okay, good. Yes, thank you. Everyone who gave me an answer. Those are right. Okay, we have the Bible. Okay, which was is said. Okay, right. We believe that is inspired by God. Okay, man wrote it, but it was inspired all by God. It is God's word. Okay, and we believe that. Okay, but what Muhammad used, okay, and he deceived people with a book called the Quran. The Quran. Okay, this is the recitation or the holy book of Islam. Okay, this was the book used by Muhammad, okay, that he changed and twisted a lot of different beliefs, okay, for people to follow him. Yes, I know there's about like a 30 second to a minute delay. I understand. That's okay. Thank you guys for participating in that. Okay, number 17. Muhammad claimed to be, lowercase g, God. And demanded worship, but elevated himself to the status of the last prophet, rejecting all previous prophets as false. Okay, remember how we talked about you have Adam, Noah, Moses, all those guys up to Jesus. These were like the main prophets per se, Muhammad said. He said, hey, I'm the last prophet, but I'm the only right prophet. Everyone else is false. I'm the only right prophet. You have to follow me. As if he's saying again, as if he's saying he's lowercase g, God. Okay, obviously he wasn't. Okay, and his, nothing he said was proven to be true. Jesus, there's history and science to back everything up. Muhammad's was nothing. It was just a win. But people believed it and followed it. Okay, so again, know the book, the Quran. Know that Muhammad claimed to be a god. Okay, we just have two more notes and then we'll be done for today, I believe. Okay, our next note, say this is going to lead us to the pillars of Islam. Okay, what uh, the Muslims, they held strong to these five pillars. Okay, the first pillar requires Muslims who wrongly acknowledge that no one but Allah is to be worshipped. Okay, only Allah can be worshipped. The second pillar requires Muslims to pray to Allah five times a day facing Mecca. Wherever you are, you face where Mecca is. Okay, you, you pray to him five times a day. Third pillar. So these are what Muslims or Islam and Muslims had to do. Required Muslims to give a charity and the poor. The fourth pillar requires Muslims to fast during Ramadan. Okay, to enter paradise, the fifth pillar further requires Muslims to make a pilgrimage or a hajj to Mecca during their lifetime or sacrifice. Okay, there's a contrast between Christianity and Muslim. You should already know that by now. Right? We should already know. No, I mean, yes, it is like the Book of Mormon, but no, it's not the same thing. They have way different beliefs, but yes, it is a false book that can't be proven to be true at all. Okay, the issue between Christianity and Islam could not be more clear-cut. Muhammad preached much about power and mercy of the one God, Allah, opposing the polytheism, or the worship of many gods, and idolatry prevalent in Arabia. But because he rejected Jesus Christ as the Son of God, Muhammad could not avoid the trap of humanism. Remember the worship of man, that he is God. Though he never claimed to be God, remember he never said he is God, he just said, I'm the last prophet, I'm the only thing that's true. Okay, Muhammad elevated himself to the status of the last prophet. In effect, Muhammad became the only prophet, for he rejected the Bible records of earlier prophets as false. Thus Muhammad stood as one man, between all other men, and the supposed one true God, teaching that men could achieve salvation by what they did and not by Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross, which obviously we don't believe. The notes are on the screen, John. Yes, you can say stuff that I'm saying. You can mark and make extra notes, but the notes are just what are on the screen. Okay, then we're, it's going to bring us to a thing that's known as Caliphs. Caliphs, as we have a few minutes left, let's get through these. We have two things. Okay, two last notes, and then we'll be done for today. Caliphs. Okay, these were Muhammad's successors who led the Arab Muslims in holy wars to conquer much of the Middle East part of the Far East, North Africa, and even Spain. After about 715, Muslim victories ceased. The, okay, so they, they ruled over 
they conquered Roman Empire or the present day Bi or at that time the Byzantine Empire. Okay, they conquered all that. Okay, they conquered Spain. They conquered some of like Asia. Okay, Africa, maybe Carthage area, under these caliphs or these like generals, caliphs. Okay, after about 715 A.D., Muslim victory ceased. Okay, stop. The first failure came in Central Asia. By 715, Turkish forces had pushed the Arab Muslims out of Iran. Then, a prolonged siege of Constantinople between 717 and 718 failed. Finally, okay, which is our last note for today, the Battle of Tours happened. In 732 AD, which spelled defeat in Europe. This is where Muslims were defeated in Western Europe beyond Spain. Okay, so know these as the holy wars. Okay, these, these things and the caliphs are the ones that led them after Muhammad died or he was gone. Okay, the Battle of Tours is where they were finally Defeated. And this is going to lead us into a different time period. Just know the difference between Christianity and the Muslim belief. The Quran and the Bible. How they are very different. How the Bible and Jesus can be backed up by history and science. Muhammad and Quran, there is nothing to back it up. People just believed it. And then they became, became so consumed with this. And it led to just power and hunger. But we're going to be talking about, uh, obviously since Europe were the people that stopped them. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about Europe's crusades. Okay, a cool time in history. Well, cool to talk about. I don't know if it's a cool time in history. It's kind of dark. Okay, but for classwork, since you're home all day, yes, there is classwork, and it will be due. Okay, so whenever you guys are able to come back in person, you need to have this and turn it in. Okay, for homework, classwork slash homework. Page 103. Page 103. Okay, so this isn't due tomorrow. Okay, this is considered classwork today. It'll be due whenever we're able to come back. Okay, page 103. Questions 1 through 11. Or let's just do 1 through 7 odd. Page 103. 1 through 7 odd. Okay, if you guys have any questions with that, let me know. Um, I can't go back to the notes. Again, you can try to get them maybe tomorrow. I'll go through them quickly. Okay, we're done for today. The class period is over. Let me see if I I'll pull I'll try to pull them up real quick. I do have to go to another class. Emma, you said 14 and 15. 14 was Muslims, those who follow Islam. Yes, questions one through seven. Odd. Okay, hopefully you guys are doing well. We will see you tomorrow. 14, Emma, is Muslims, those who follow Islam. And 15 is both Islam and Muslim come from the Arabic word for surrender. Okay, that is it. It's great to see you guys in the chat. Hopefully we can see you in person sometime soon. Yes, page 103, questions 1 through 7. Ah, make sure you keep all this work so you can turn it in once we get back. Okay, praying for you guys. Let me know if you guys need anything. Um... Again, basketball is also postponed as of now. Okay, we'll try to see if we can have something in the future soon. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. We will see you again tomorrow.